Hello and thanks for joining me. Let's chat for a few minutes about Look Homeward Angel by Thomas Wolfe, which is the most recent book that I finished. And as usual, following this chat, I will touch base briefly on what I'm currently reading as well as chat a bit about what my tentative plans are to read next. But for now, let's spend a few minutes with Look Homeward Angel by Thomas Wolfe. This was originally published in 1929. I read this book electronically, and I think this e-edition that I read was published last year, if I remember correctly. But yeah, this book has been on my reading radar for quite some time. You know, this book, um, I went to high school in Arkansas. So in my high school, we had a Southern literature uh, sort of module. And this book was mentioned during that uh during high school, it was considered a uh, sort of a classic of Southern literature, as well as I think the American canon, you know, literary canon for most of the 20th century. I think it, it was considered, you know, highly thought of and actually presented at universities and things like this. I, I, what, from what I could read, it's sort of fallen out of favor for a number of reasons. But um, yeah, I always had kind of wanted to read it because it part of it takes place actually in Arkansas. So since I'm from there, you know, I had heard that. So I was kind of curious about that. Um, so anyway, I was really glad to get it read. But what it's about, it's basically a family saga. So it's about the Gantt family and they uh, and their life in this fictional town of Altamont in a fictional state called Catawba. What really, I think from what I could understand, this is really a semi-autobiographical fictionalized account of the author's uh, childhood and or youth and in Asheville, North Carolina. So the Gantt family, you know, the dad is a stone cutter. So, you know, like cemetery uh, memorials and things like that. And so the title of the book, Look Homeward Angel, has sort of two meanings. For one, it comes from a Milton poem. The Milton poem is called, uh, looks like Lycidas. And the poem is, Look Homeward Angel Now and Melt with Ruth. And O ye dolphins, waft the hapless youth. So that's where the title comes from. But it also pertains to this angel that the dad uh, sort of became a stone cutter because he saw these angels, you know, meant for cemeteries carved in marble or whatever. And he thought it was beautiful. So he actually had one of these that sort of stood at the door of his shop. And it's just sort of, a, I think, a metaphor for the... Um, the sort of intransience of life and, um, you know, the angel uh, sort of look, pointing, pointing the... Pointing the um, Pointing all living people, you know, to their ultimate fate, ultimately, I guess, you know, I don't know. But um, yeah, the book concerns this family, this sort of dysfunctional family. Eugene, the main character, is the youngest of, of six kids total, I guess. And his parents, uh, da the dad, uh, Gant, Mr. Gant, Oliver Gant, is a stonecutter, has a drinking problems, you know. So this sort of, the family wrestles with this their whole life. And then the mother, Eliza, she sort of focuses on property. She's sort of obsessed with with um, money and um, property and she thinks like the key to wealth is real estate so she focuses like almost all of her attention on this uh, uh, getting property and keeping property and expanding property she ultimately um, opens up this boarding house and so this boarding house so this town that they live in Altamont this fictionalized town is sort of like the actual town of Asheville North Carolina it's a resort town it's a health town so around this takes place around 1900 so the main character Eugene is born in 1900 and the book ends in around 1919 the book actually starts a little bit before his uh, life um, before his birth uh, with some of the birth of the other children uh, so around the 1892 uh, um, 1919 is the period of time that we're talking about. And so this town, so people come from all over the South mainly to this town whenever they have some sort of illness like tuberculosis or something. And then they come and they spend time in this town that's you know, supposed to be good for their health. And so um, this, like they stay at this boarding house. So these people that come and go at the boarding house also provide some of the characters as well as, uh, you know, some of, provide some of the, you know, uh, we get introduced to them. So we, we sort of get introduced to their life and, and they interact with the family as well as the townspeople. You know, the town is sort of structured like there's the people who are the, you know, the movers and shakers and then the sort of the, the merchants and, you know, the other, the other boys that Eugene, the main character sort of runs around with. So we get to know all of these people and they interact with the family. So it's kind of just like, this family saga. It's really a coming of age tale for Eugene because it starts with him being born and it takes us all the way through his schooling years, his high school, and then on into um, he goes to college eventually in the book. Uh, so 
Yeah, the book, though, is, you know, I understand now after reading it is parts of it are really, really beautiful. Um, the writer has this really florid style and descriptive poetic style of writing. There's a scene particularly in the book that is this town waking up. Remember, this is the early 20th century, so there's still horse-drawn carts and things. And so this town waking up, I mean, I can't describe it verbally, but this town of this period um, coming to life, you know, in the really early morning hours as the milk's been delivered and, you know, stuff like that uh, of this time uh, was really a window back in time. I mean, I think when the book was probably written, it was far more familiar to that audience at that time than it is to us today. But reading it today is, um, you know, a little bit different. And I'll talk a bit more about how it's different in another way here in a bit. But yeah, so the, I, this past, though, this look in the past of this town, when he's, uh, uh, this description of this boy's kind of coming of age, it's not idealized. So we see, um, you know, we know in the town who's got the uh, drinking problem. Um, there's also seems to be, a, for, it's a resort town, so it's got a lot of like people that kind of are transient. So there's, there sort of seems to be a lot of casual like sexual transactions that go on sometimes a form of pro kind of like a low level prostitution and then sometimes just full on prostitution so there's that that kind of surprised me because I really wasn't expecting that in, in this novel but um, you know it's part of their life in this town so I think it was a really true description of this town and these towns people of this era and it supposedly you know this in my autobiographical for the author you know as as uh, as I said so um it also though kind of disturbingly it really uh, explicitly uh describes the racism and the anti-semitism of the time and I'm going to read a little excerpt from it here in a bit but you know I when I first saw this I was a little bit shocked by it you know so he uses in the novel there is the n word uh used to describe african americans i don't want to say this word on my channel so i'm not going to say the actual word i will just say n word for that and then for jewish people there is the k word there is a word that describes jewish people a derogatory term that starts with a k so i will just say k word for that but so the African Americans presented in the book are uh, usually described as the N-word and um, also um, not usually portrayed as all that well. Um, but then again, this is a picture of this town of this time. So I you know, thought about, this made me think a lot about how to read this book. Should I read this book as a product of its time, or should I read this book as a 21st century person? I have to read the book as who I am, as a 21st reading it in the 21st century, but I read it in light of the fact that it was portraying this town of this time, and, um, you know, so I just um, took it for that on that level. But I want to read a bit just so that you can sort of get a description of what I'm talking about with with the uh, racism and the anti-Semitism present in it. So um, it says here, I'm just going to read a few little excerpts here. In, but they guarded what they had against the barbarians. Eugene, Max, and Harry ruled their little neighborhood. They made war upon the Negroes and the Jews, who amused them and upon the pigtail alley people whom they hated and despised. Or they stoned, this, it skips a little bit, and then they stoned the cycling black boy of the markets as he swerved down gracefully into an alley. Nor did they hate them, clowns are black. They had learned as well that it was proper to cuff these people kindly, curse them cheerfully, feed them magnanimously, Men are kind to a faithful wagging dog, but he must not habitually walk upon two legs. They knew that they must take nothing off a inward, and that the beginnings of argument could best be scotched with a club and a broken head, only you couldn't break an inward's head. They spat joyously upon the Jews, drown a Jew, and hit an inward. The boys would wait on the Jews, follow them home shouting goose grease, goose grease, which they were convinced was the chief staple of Semitic diet. 
The chief object of their torture was a little furtive-faced boy whose name was Isaac Lipinski. They pounced cattishly at him when he appeared, harried him down alleys, over fences, across yards, into barns, stables, and his own house. He moved with amazing speed and stealth, escaping fantastically, teasing them to the pursuit, thumbing his fingers at them, and grinning with wide, K-word, constant derision. So yeah, that was a little disturbing. Not a little disturbing. It was really disturbing um, to read. And then this occurred throughout the book, really. Um, African Americans are portrayed as lazy, bad workers, and they steal. Um, and also sex sexually promiscu promiscuous. There's only one African-American character who is not portrayed this way, and she is uh, the father, Mr. Gant, Oliver Gant, tries to sexually assault her, and she, with all her dignity, try, dignity tries to leave, or is does leave, um, the employee of the house, and um, they laugh at her. They think she's funny uh, because she's uh, she gets kind of, you know, overwrought with uh, the fact that he, she's scared of him. Uh, they think it's funny. And then there's another instance where a Jewish guy... Uh, a man's son uh, commits suicide by drinking uh, carbolic acid, and he's wailing and going, oi, 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 and they think it's funny, uh, the characters in the book. So that was a little disturbing, but I, I read it in light of the fact that it was showing me, as a 21st century person, um, I, it was showing me this world of this time. And not only this world, but this literary world, because if you read about this I tried to research it a bit, and it's not mentioned that it's like it's not in the Wikipedia. This sort of racism and anti-Semitism. So I didn't see uh, I didn't see that. So I think that that's kind of interesting as well. So anyway, um, I think that's all I want to say about the book. I did I did I am glad that I finally read the book um, because I had thought about it and wanted to read it for so long. So I did uh, did notch that one off my off my list. So and I'm glad I read it because it was parts of it were quite beautiful, like I said, as opposed to uh, sort of the racism and the anti-Semitism that uh, was a little difficult to read, but also important to, you know, bear witness to and to acknowledge um, has ha, has happened. So I think I'll leave the chat with that. What I am currently reading, let me just pull that up real quick uh, here. I am reading Delphi, A History of the Center of the Ancient World, and I am almost finished with this. So I should be finished with this uh, very, very soon, and I will have a chat coming up uh, shortly thereafter. Then following Delphi, I think, you know, uh, I am thinking about reading this book, Rosalda by Herman Hesse. I've had this for a while uh, and been wanting to read this for a while. It's one of two Hesse novels that I want to read this year. So I might do this, or I might read this, actually, The Day the Sun Died by Jan Lianki, and I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat right. Set over the course of one night, the day the sun died pits chaos and darkness against the sunny optimism of the Chinese dream. Um, we are thrown into the middle of an increasingly strange and troubling waking nightmare as Li Nianian and his father struggle to save the town and persuade the beneficent sun to rise. So it sounds really good. It's got really good reviews from what I've read so far about it. So it's on my list to read this year, so it might be next as well. So I don't know. One of those two will be coming up next following Delphi. So stay tuned. Lots more coming. Take care. Bye.